Hello, YouTube, and welcome back to week two of VCT Pacific's Roster Mania. Things are still quite a bit in the works, uh, and we'll take a look at how things have changed, if there are any new, maybe rumors, or maybe new players that are looking for teams, trying to get back into the scene, things like that. And we'll discuss how each team's roster is looking so far, and I myself will make a couple of my own uh, suggestions or guesses as to what I think could work out very well for next year's VCT Pacific teams. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, so we set up our own little sheet here just so we can keep tabs on our own stream. Um, just as a quick highlight, we will be doing our weekly rankings of how I think the rosters look each week as we go through the off season. Uh, and then we do have uh, the all the rosters that will be playing in VCT Pacific next year. If you look down in the bottom right, this is the color code, just so it's very clear. So anything in blue basically means the team has announced it, right? Uh, I'm not locking in anything as 100% unless the team has specifically announced it. Um, you know, once the off season, once we're getting like near the start of the season then maybe if it's just a matter of continuing contracts and things like that, we'll start to color code it blue as well. Uh, but otherwise, that's what it is. And then the green is, again, um, they're either continuing... Oh, you know what? I should... We'll change that. We won't make that likely. So continuing as in they're not a new signing. Uh, so you can see Lightning Fest recently was announced for Global Esports there. Uh, we can talk about that here in a second. And then yellow is basically there are rumors. Maybe it's them leaving. Maybe it's them joining. Who knows? I don't care what the percentage is. It just means that someone has set it out there and not entirely baselessly. Uh, red means that they are out 100%. Again, these are only announced stuff. And then purple is if I want to make any of my own suggestions each week as to, hey, like this person's still in the market. This team should try to get that person, things like that. Uh, we'll note it that way. Yeah, they have Try and Sheev. Um, I'm not familiar with Try. Okay. Oh, they were part of Clown on Korea, but then they went over to uh, Royal. Now, Sheev, I am fairly familiar with if it's the same guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, so he was Spear Gaming's coach. He then coached um, the Game Changers team for Spear Gaming as well. Uh, I actually wasn't quite aware that he was still jumping around with a couple other coaching jobs here and there. But what he did with Spear uh, was pretty good last year. What he did with Spear was pretty good. So um, I'm not surprised that, you know, with two Korean coaches that they would be trying to bring in, you know, a couple Korean players. Now, supposedly the import rule should be the same once the partner league kicks off for china but right now they're in their own kind of version of ascension china's in a weird spot just because they have a little bit of catch-up to do in terms of the structure of the league uh, so technically it's the off season technically the import rule doesn't apply for ascension it's the same in challengers as well so um we'll see um i don't know what the plan is there but eco and sylvan are both good players here's the thing i think eco is pretty good too i mean i don't think he's the worst player on this team Right. If I had to pick, I I would I would say God Dead is probably the worst player, and not just in terms of like aim, but also just as a package, right? Flexibility, aim, game sense, all of that. Eco, I've always had a decent impression of Eco back in the day when he was playing in Korea Challengers. Uh, he had some really good moments when he was playing on TNL alongside TS and Meteor. So, I, I mean, do I think he's like a must-have initiator? No. But do I think he's an absolutely solid initiator? I think so. And he has good vibes. Like, he tries to keep morale up. I mean, you need that on stage. That's something that Genji lacked sorely during uh, VCT Pacific 2023. Uh, so, hope he lands somewhere good. Sylvan, I mean, what more is there to say? If you put him back on smokes, I think he's always going to be good for one, if not more. I think he absolutely should still be considered one of the more wanted controllers in asia so uh yeah i mean if both of them are going to top esports hopefully one of them can still land a starter spot there and hopefully things work out uh but if not do they come back to pacific who knows i mean obviously the window is starting it's it's open for quite some time but a lot of teams are already making moves so it's starting to close in other than that we haven't heard anything we haven't heard about what the coaching staff is going to look like there's nothing, and I feel like maybe Gen G is just taking things slow, which I'm all for. I'm all for not rushing things. Um, I think that's good. It's just that 
if they're doing that, I gotta imagine that they're happy to just look at a long-term project, which is a phrase that's been thrown around VCT by many different people and many different orgs, and it's not always realistically feasible. But if you're not already making moves, so if you're not trying to scramble for the best agents out there, free agents or ones that are looking for new opportunities and, and have reasonable buyouts or whatnot, right, terms to end their previous contracts, if that's not your goal then hopefully you're looking at a long-term project, right? Um, and we talked about it last week in terms of, you know, is there is there a world where they could build a good, um, where they could build a good tier two, like roster from the existing tier two? Korea League? And the answer is already actually not so much. So Stu is over in China. Um, I didn't realize Yo Man had joined Stu over in China. So Yo Man's out. Uh, Estrella's, you know, already on RQ. So even kind of the dream team I had thought of personally, no longer possible. I mean, there's still some, you know, there's still some good players to look at right like lakia there's no one there's no confirmed report yet for lakia excuse my pupper she's having fun with one of my socks um persia still available x he's still i mean he still exists he's still signed with uh, d plus but um i mean i'm not big on allow but allow is still there jung high is still there uh i'm not big on hate i'm not big on hate esperanza is there so there's you know, there are options here, but not the type of team, not the exact five I talked about last week. So I'm starting to think if that's not even, uh, give me one second. So if that's not it, then I mean, maybe they're looking at other younger talent, right? I mean, Genji has an academy squad. Hey, what's up, Ominous? What's up, Komodo? Any decent Aussies are going to China? Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing. If I was an Australian player in China, listen, there's there's just more teams that are desperately looking for players in China, and China simply just has more money. So if you're okay with living in China, like if you're okay to adjust and whatnot and maybe think of it as a short-term project for your own career, if I was an Australian player, I would 100% recommend going to China over Pacific. I, that's just the reality, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying it like it is. Well, LP, yeah. L, the thing with the thing with League of Legends was it kind of all happened at once. Like, just entire teams were being bought out, but like by different teams in China. So they were just being, you know, picked away. So I think it's a. I think it had a different vibe then. Also, like Korea was at the top, and then China was taking Korean talent. So there's a different vibe. Uh, currently, you know, other than. Paper X and then Derek's doing quite well. Uh, Pacific is not at the top, so <laughs> and especially not Korea. So I think the I think the viewpoint is a little different. FPX announced an Australian player one hour ago. Really, I missed it. I mean, listen, all all power all power to the Australian players. If you have a chance to go to China, Specifically for Australia, I would just say this is a bit of a segue, but I guess technically Australia is part of the Pacific ecosystem. Let's not forget they're part of the same challenger system. So uh, Oceania is. So for Australia specifically, because you're so physically distant and disconnected, I honestly think if you can just muster the courage to go live in China and play there for a year, um, like that is probably your best bet. One of your best bets to jumpstart your career, right? Even if you don't win in China, you're going to have more opportunities to scrim, right? With other Pacific teams and Chinese teams, you'll, you'll just have more of an opportunity to get your name out there. Um, whether it's through pro play, whether it's on stage, whether it's through scrims, like you, you literally, it just closes the gap. And then you get, you know, more money than you probably would in Australia and probably for most of the Pacific teams as well, depending on which org it is in China. So, now, not to say that that's an easy choice to make, right? Living in a country where the culture is very different, the language is very different, and uh, all of that, 
even for a year, uh, it, c it can be rough. But some people, they thrive off of it. So listen, if you can muster that for a year um, and you, you really want to consider trying to build up a career in Valorant Esports and you're given an opportunity to do so, I, I, I think you should absolutely heavily favor going to China. It is that is literally that like foot in the door. But yeah, so going back to Genji. Um, oh wait, King is um, King is in T1. That's confirmed. So yeah, I mean I don't know. They released everyone. Could, they could resign them, but I don't think they will. Well, again, it depends on the coaching as well. Genji's such a mystery because maybe the coaches come in and they're like. Well, Meteor, like, how do you work, feel about working with TS again? And maybe he's like, that's okay. And they're like, okay, maybe we resign. I don't know. I don't know. TS was streaming the other day. So. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's what's going on with Gen G. But hey, if they're looking to build a long-term project with, like, younger talent that is coming up in Korea, because a lot of the Korean community and some of the Korean casters have been talking about how there's, like, all these kids that are just really, really killing it in terms of the aim department but they're just they were just too young they were just like one or two years too young so some of them should be getting into that age group to be able to compete in 2024 so that's a possibility uh, i'm not too privy on that pool there's a there is a new up-and-coming talent in New Zealand, Oceania, called Feta. All right, I'll, I'll keep a, I'll keep eyes on the name. Keep eyes on the name. Let's talk about Team Secret. Okay, so we've all been talking as if Warbirds is out, but then I was like, but he wasn't actually released because here's the thing, not yet. Um, his contract is technically till 2024 and i thought it would be weird to release him unless he had a better offer from another team um now this was reported right uh, as a leak um but it was never confirmed uh, but then there was this weird thing where jesse vash responded and he was like not true 100 percent, and then he deleted that tweet as well which is also kind of weird so i wonder if it's more of a like Maybe Warbirds did have an offer from somewhere else and he was talking to the team about it and I guess you actually didn't know. I don't, I don't know. It seems weird that he wouldn't know, but... Um, I, anyway, this is not confirmed yet. And so if that's the case... Again, unless you're losing the bidding war and he just has a better offer that includes the buyout, then you, there's not really much you can do. You're just looking for an amicable departure. So unless that's the situation... I don't know if you let go of him. It seemed like the players were pretty happy working with Warbirds, or at least the veteran players seemed to be. Um, I thought he made just sweeping improvements for the team. So I'd like to see him stay. I'd like to see him stay. I think he, I think he's one of those coaches that, you know, it's worth giving him another year to, to see what else he can do. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but other than that, Dubstep is now looking for a team. Uh, so Team Secret currently has one slot that they need to fill. The question becomes, what are they missing? Um, so it's either Sentinel or Duelist. Depending, I mean, whenever they were playing Rays, it was Jeremy anyway. We are currently seeming to move more into a Rays meta. Again, off is very long, but I, I also don't see a world where... Like, Raze is going to become irrelevant. I think Raze is going to kind of become the new jet where it's like, well, you could always just play Raze and it's okay. Once people, because we're getting into a Raze meta, more people are going to practice Raze. More people are going to get better with Raze's movement. Um, and then it's like, okay, well, yeah, the only thing she can't do as reliably is opping at that point. So... Um, if Jeremy's okay with that. Now, it just seemed like Ch Jeremy, again, just didn't want to opt that much, which was always weird to me because he used to be the chamber player f uh, before as well. So maybe they also need an opper, right? Either a Sentinel or a Duelist. Personally, nothing against the guy, since we're talking rosters. If you're going to make changes, I think you have to consider... 
a, a change for your controller as well. Um, Borkum's fine, but fine is not cutting it, right? Um, he has his moments, but not as much as he used to. Eminem EJ. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, like, e well, EJ, I mean, EJ would be a bit of a gamble, right? Just because, again, he's more of like, a, well, there's potential. Uh, there's untapped potential. But, hey, EJ, EJ's an option. Um, I mean, Emin would be another initiator. So, I mean, maybe Jesse goes t to controller. Maybe. I mean, he, he often plays the cypher, so... That's a possibility. Emin, I thought, was really good, too. I thought he was consistent enough. Uh, Dragon, Lou, Norsen, and RDW are probably the next four to be looked at from Oceana that are currently free agents. Oh, are all of them... Uh, I didn't realize... I thought maybe Dragon and Lou would have already been signed somewhere. But I guess if it's not announced, we have to consider them as free agents. I haven't been keeping a very close eye, to be very honest. I mean, yeah, listen, you got it. You, you have to start to consider because here's the thing is that Australian players would not count as imports, right? Because they're Pacific. So again, like there, there is a bit of a mathematical game to be played here. So yeah, I, again, I, I'm curious what the discussion is here. And I think the big discussion revolves around Jeremy. Do you want to be more of a Sentinel player that now and then can play double duelist? Or do you want to be the primary duelist? And maybe that is part of the discussion that they're having, uh, which would change who they are trialing. Um, now, I believe... Oh, did I close it? Maybe I did close it. Oh, never mind. So there, there are reports of all these trials, which, I mean, I don't know if this is 100% true or not, so we'll take it with a grain of salt. But these are all names I'm not surprised would be trialing, uh, especially because they are all from the same region and same country. So again, and I talked about it last week, I'm not too concerned about like filling in firepower. Um, I feel like the Philippines just has really good raw talent that they can pick up on. It's, again, it's a matter of roles, and it's a matter of if the coaches can reel them in. So we'll keep an eye on them. But, yeah, I am curious. I'm not going to put down, like, Emin or EJ as my own personal guest, because I don't see it as being that likely. Um, I don't know if that's something where I would be like, oh, that would, like, 100% make this team so good. I, It's just, like, I'd be happy to see that. But So we'll wait and see. What's new? <laughs> Do you want to I make one t tweet to Coach Autumn saying that I can help them with English comms and you know, all the rumors are flying in. Maybe I should put my name under the T1 rumor mill. All right, Zeta. Uh, we still have no idea what's going on. Uh, they are technically, I believe, all... Uh, wait, wasn't Barca... Wait, hold on. Is he not officially released? I thought he was. Oh my god. You're telling me he's not? Oh my god, he's not. Don't put him in red. Oh, I totally thought he was. I guess it wasn't officially reported yet. I think there maybe was a report prior, but... So all of them are technically still on contract. But there are rumors that they're... It's, it's weird also that Junior isn't listed here, but... Because he's technically still there as well, right? Yeah. Um, but there have been rumors that everyone is shopping around, so... I have no idea. Um, there are rumors that some of them are trialing people who's common English. Uh, there's all sorts of rumors. Who knows? Now, personally, I... Again, I do think they need to... If they want to upgrade, uh, they need to swap out these two players, right? And we're not talking about side grades. Side grades, uh, you know, side grades are a matter of, like, financial and maybe internal uh, reasons. But 
if you're making a change, hopefully it's usually for an upgrade. And if that's the case, I think it's literally this is the priority order. It's Crow, then 10. Uh, nothing against these guys. Crow started to try to show up towards the end of the season, but it just wasn't enough. And then in LCQ, he was quiet again. And 10 was just relatively quiet for most of the most of the year. So I think it's that order. Um, and if that's the case, either you're looking for a race pair, which I don't think you need. I mean, I think Depp can play the race just fine. Um, it's more, I think they had him playing race just because he was more comfortable on that and it worked out for them. At LCQ and champs, um... Wait, did he play it at LCQ? Maybe it was only at champs, but I think he did play it at LCQ. But other than that, I mean, unless Laz is happy to just go back to pure Sentinel, then yeah, you'd still need your main info initiator. You still need your, you know, main Sentinel or another kind of flex player, I guess. So yeah, I have no idea. I mean, again, no, no one's officially moved yet for Zeta, so we have to wait and see. But if they stay this way, it's just not going to be exciting. That's my take. If it stays, it's simply not going to be exciting. And even the whole, like, maybe the fairy tale run will return from Masters Reykjavik 2022. That story is going to be so overdone by 2024 that even that's not going to be exciting. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, we waited two years for that to happen again, and it didn't. So now it's boring. So... I kind of hope they do make a change just because otherwise I think we'll know exactly what to expect. Even if there's a style change, et cetera, et cetera, I think there are some very hard caps on this roster. And I don't think that that's changing. And I think part of it is maybe the coaching. Uh, again, it's hard to always talk about coaching confidently because we don't know what goes on behind the curtain. But if, you, if the team hasn't been able to break their ceiling, either... The players are absolutely hard capped on their aim, which I think some of them might be. But other than that, it's like, okay, well, clearly the coaching isn't evolving this team. Um, and it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to mean that they're like bad coaches, but maybe it's a matter of you need something new, right? That was part of the discussion for DRX. If personally, I never doubted Termi as a coach, but it was more a, okay, the combination of like Termi, Stacks, RB, and Zest being together and them having the same philosophy for a while maybe isn't healthy. And then they proved me wrong by saying, okay, we are willing to change it at Champions 2023. So, but we haven't seen that from Zeta. So I don't have faith. If it stays the same, I'm going to be very honest. They are probably one of the least exciting teams for me, um, other than maybe DFM, depending on if they bring an even less exciting new roster. So I hope they do make a change one way or another, whether it's the coach, whether it's one or two players, maybe a combination of all of that, just something new. You're right. I do think they also lag behind in terms of meta and adjusting. And part of that, I think, is coaching, right? If you're not ever trying to get ahead of the meta, you will always be behind the meta. And here's the thing. You won't really know what's meta until... Either that team has beaten, like, you plus three other teams, or you've been beaten by the same meta, like, three times in a row, right? And by then, it's already too late, because now you have to practice it, and then you're catching up. And it's like, this is why they always go for fairy tale runs, is because it clicks so late, and then they have to practice it, and it's like, okay, well, now we, now we finally figured it out. And it's like, well, okay, you are literally on your last game of the season, and it's like, okay, but again, that story was, it was cool for this year. By the start of 2024, I am going to be so sick of that story. Um, I'm not going to mention it during my casts it, if the roster stays the same. So hopefully they change something. Hopefully they change something. Man, I thought this week was quite exciting in terms of overall news, but I guess it's just been random things floating around. Uh, and nothing crazy has happened, actually. Okay, RRQ. Ooh, things have happened with RRQ. So last week, literally during the stream, Australia was announced as a new addition. They signed Australia from D+. 
He is coming in as a flex player for RRQ. Now, some people, I, I've noticed that there, there are some people that are simply basing his performance from D+, and saying like, well, you know, I think he IGL'd in D+, but I think that was more just because they needed an IGL. Uh, so I don't know how much value that brings. Again, I said it last week. He's one of those players that even before his name change, he used to, be, he used to go by the name Gun Korea. Um, a lot of people in the know have said, I mean, he's a valuable player simply because he's one of the few Koreans who can IGL. So that was like the way to look at this player, right? So it wasn't like a, well, no one else wanted to IGL, so he kind of had to on D+. It was more like he's he has always been considered more or less only as an IGL. Um, he also has decent fracking power. And again, I don't think he's going to be the main caller. I think Flips will be. But I think him having that just game sense to be able to IGL on his own is a huge benefit uh, if the chemistry works out. Um, I mean, I, again, I mean, no one's going to talk bad on a new team announcement, but it sounds like RQ, uh, they're very confident. It sounds like things have been working well even before announcing the signing. So I'm very happy for that. Uh, now the only thing, the only thing for um, Australia again is that like the Korean community is quite, well I won't even say split. They're quite negative about him just because he's had, he's had you know he's had some things that that haven't really painted him in a good light. Um, nothing that like cross the line of like well okay any team that signs this player like ban those guys like nothing like that. But uh, he's he he doesn't seem to be a very likable character. I have not spoken to him personally yet uh but so i'm just basing him off of his gameplay uh and also you know if he does cross the line then i'll then i'll judge him as a person but otherwise i'm very happy for this and it, again it sounds like chemistry works out so if you have two people who have the ability to call that simply means that now if the chemistry works out your brain power you can start to offload a little bit to each other right so um, I think that's I think that's very important. I'm glad that this team has looked at that uh, as something that they need to do. Um, I hope it does continue to work out because I talked about it last week, but Flips always played his worst when everyone was alive because it seemed like he was so heavy on the calling. Uh, and simply having someone else who's able to call and maybe throw around ideas, maybe calm, maybe you know keep timers, things like that should help both Flips and Estrella perform better on their fronts. Um, yeah, there there wasn't anything confirmed. Now, there are rumors that Jemkin is signing with RQ, which I would not be surprised. So here's what happened. There were rumors that Scars wanted to make a run back, right? They wanted to run it back with the same squad. But there have always been questions about would they ever be able to keep their full roster had they won Ascension uh, because Jemkin and Crystal are both considered imports. Uh, and some people try to go through a lot of mental hoops saying like, well, doesn't one of them have residency, etc. But basically all the all the data that we have publicly pointed in the direction of no, I think they both count as imports. So it seemed like there there was this idea that they wanted to run it back. Um, but literally, I think the day after my stream last week, Crystal put out. Did Crystal put out his own tweet or was that a report? But anyway, there was a there was a report that Crystal was looking for a team oh it was him yeah it was his own tweet uh which made me believe that jemkin would be looking for a team and so then the discussion was back in right for both jemkin and crystal i think they are both absolutely players worth looking at absolutely i think they're both players worth the import slot for most pacific teams so so even in my head i was like okay well then jemkin's a real possibility here for teams like rq ge you know some of these teams that just needed a explosive wild card duelist and if this is true if this rumor is true if jemkin is truly joining rq which which does seem fairly likely just because ej was just released as well um Oh, I am so continuing my fanboying of RQ, if this is true. Let's talk about EJ just briefly. Um, and, and then I guess since we're talking about team players that have left, Emin as well. Uh, so EJ, I tweeted this. I think EJ is one of those players that actually proved enough of his untapped potential in one year, right? This was a player that never really got to see the main stage um, in Tier 2. He was always playing online. He was finally given the opportunity with RQ. 
and you know he was he was rocky but i think he showed his peaks and more than anything i think he showed improvement over the year uh, which is hard right you're you're being put on the spot as a singular duelist mind you right so they have him playing solo duelist the entire time uh they have him playing you know many different types of duelists they originally started with a lot of neon on a certain maps so then they went primarily with jet things like that and he handled that pressure i thought he handled it you know did he bring them amazing success no but i thought he handled it well enough and he showed some peaks now he was also quite shaky it seemed like his mental was the biggest the biggest difficulty that he had trouble training um and i think he's talked about that before as well where it's just like uh, he needs to be able to kind of find that right balance of confidence and being calm and patience but i think he's a player worth looking at i think any team could still work with him quite well however if rq again if we're looking at teams wanting to upgrade and not side grade it's like okay well listen xfero constantly has explosive moments uh elmi more not you know fairly consistently has explosive moments i think he's he's a bit more variable but elmi more and also his aim is still quite good sometimes he has a little bit of trouble warming up it feels like but other than that very good uh 2ge uh, has been getting more and more clutches towards the end it seemed like his his game sense when he has to clutch seemed to be coming alive flips is the igl and i feel like his igling has been pretty good cons all things considered so it's like okay well then if you're gonna make an upgrade it's probably ej right because the consistency wasn't there and if you look at the best teams in the world at the end of the day the best teams that have always won other literally the only one i can think of um the only one I can think of is the old Gambit. They were the only team that lifted the trophy without an explosive duelist. But that was very much also because they dictated the meta during that time where it, like, the duelist being sacrificial was almost better. So, other than that, at the end of the day, the best teams, whether you're lifting the trophy or getting to the grand finals, have always had a duelist that can explode and fairly consistently. Not every game, but your peaks are mega high. And then even if not, it's like, okay, well, at least you're still creating space, right? So, and EJ, EJ was creating, he was, again, he was, his gap was like much bigger and he was starting to try, well, I guess the high wasn't higher i guess it was like this it was it was lower and he was trying to upgrade it and he was he was starting to bring up his lows a bit more but his highs weren't quite getting there fast enough is what it felt like right now i don't think we've seen the cap on ej i think if you give him time if you're willing to work with him and if you have a really solid roster otherwise you know i think he could continue to prove his worth um i think he could absolutely be valuable in a challenger's team for sure but again if he, you have all these other you know keys to your puzzle and it's like okay well we really just need an explosive duelist and i think we could get top three maybe go to the finals then that's the upgrade you're making and i think jemkin absolutely fits that bill yes he had that goose egg game he had the zero kill game on rain on bind but okay first of all we've seen something get shut down on rain on bind as well which goes back to prove okay reina is always always going to be a high risk thing but also if you go back and watch that game where he got zero kills bleeds crazy guy crazy guy just crazy guy just knew he just knew the angles i believe crazy guy got jemkin like more than half of the times if i'm not mistaken more than half of the rounds so i think that's more of a that that's a both it goes both ways right and then and then he's still top fragged for scars despite having zero kills in one of the maps so it's like okay clearly his fragging isn't wasn't the issue in how he got shut down on bind and just the way the way he plays it is very explosive it's very aim heavy um i mean yeah you can always make the argument of well yeah but that wasn't challenger and ascension so who knows how he'll do against tier one teams and it's like okay yeah especially on an international stage who knows but i think within pacific i think we can wager a guess right i think it's good enough to to get to a top team so if this really is a signing if this gets announced i think it would be a very exciting year for rq now if this does get announced my assumption is is 2ge will be on the bench or released 
uh, right? If this is the idea, I assume Xfera goes back to controller. Uh, Straya is flex. Flips is initiator slash flex. Elmi more sentinel. And Jemkin is duelist. So I assume that's the idea. Astraea could actually be a really good flex for double duelist if they need as well. We don't know how good anyone could get. I mean, yeah, but I'm... We're basing it off of do we see potential or or not. For instance, uh, listen, I'm just going to say it like it is. I, I hate to pick on this guy, but he's one of the ones I can most confidently talk about. Is um, Allow, I think we've seen his cap. Now, I'm not going to say 100% because people can change, especially if you're young. Right? You could improve. Something could click at some point and you really unlock another level. Um... But I'm pretty sure we've seen the cap on allow. Right? It's just, it's, his mental block is still there. And then even his highs are not like crazy explosive. So that's what I'm saying. I feel like EJ is not quite at that point. Partly because we've only seen him on tier 1 for one year. But also because we've continued to see improvement. So you got to assume, okay, well, it's worth taking a shot at, right? I'm not going to say anyone who picks up EJ is absolutely going to see him do even better, but, you know, I also don't think you can blame them. I think you absolutely, there's reason to have faith. Yeah, exactly. Australia used to play, used to play Duelist when he played, uh, when he was playing under the name Gun Korea. So Australia is actually a really, the more I think about it, he could help play Double Duelist if needed. Um... In which case, he'd be a vocal duelist. I, the more I think about it, it's a really good pickup for RQ. And if this locks in, woof, then I think this is a squad to look at. Let's move on. Global Esports. There were some things announced for Global Esports. Uh, SK Rossi is not from PRX. That's, that's Ben Kai. Okay, so Ben Kai was announced as joining Global Esports. We'll get back to that here in a second. Lightning Fast was announced to be remaining on the roster. Um, now, Aaron was announced to be leaving. He is looking for team. Bozzy was released as well. Texture released and Magnet released. And he has joined Paper Rex. And Eraser has left the team as well. Uh, this was a little while before. We haven't heard anything about the other coaches yet. So we'll have to wait and see. But... Um, Lightning Fast was announced to be Sting, which, by the way, the way they announced it, I'm, I'm with the fandom. I, this was not a good move. It was not a good, not, not keeping Lightning Fast. I think keeping Lightning Fast is actually a really good move, but the whole, like, ooh, like 5,000 retweets and we'll show the next part of our roster. And, and then they... It, before that, they made that whole video of where they covered everyone's names and they're like, it's time for a hard reset, making it sound like they were going to release everyone. And then the first player they announced after Benkai is like, oh, it's Lightning Fast who already had a contract until 2024. Oh, wow. That is anticlimactic. And uh, quite frankly, I just don't think they did Lightning Fast justice. It, it's going to make some fans like suddenly dislike Lightning Fast unjustly just because he announced the way it was announced was not great it was not very tactful um i mean yeah i guess you got your impressions i hate it but you know i mean maybe from a business aspect you're looking at it and maybe it works out in the numbers i don't know uh but yeah lightning fast i think if you're keeping i i don't i don't want to hate on rossi because i think rossi is another player who who does have a higher peak i think he does have a higher peak but i think he needs better guidance i think he needs better coaching um I think mean, he needs better mental coaching, right? Uh, here's the thing. I think Rossi's in a position where it's like, we don't actually even know if he has a higher peak mechanically just because mentally he is... He's giving himself... You know, he's shutting himself down. So it's like you're starting to build bad habits because you're playing with a bad mental. So at that point, it's like, well, you're like going in the wrong direction. So I don't even know if you can continue to go in the right direction because we haven't tried that yet. So I think that's what you need. But in that case, I think Lightning Fast, uh, you know, he play, he comes in, he plays the one game on Raze, and I thought it was pretty good. It was a little rusty, but I thought he played his role real well, and I thought Global Esports looked very fluid when Lightning Fast played. So, you know, I think if you're keeping one or the, if you only had to keep one, right, as kind of your primary representation from India, uh, and then maybe you're picking up more players, then I think it is lightning fast. So I'm not surprised that he's the one that they announced first. Now, we should keep note that 
SK Rossi is his original contract is until 2024 as well. So there is a chance that he also still remains on the roster. There is a chance. Um, there are rumors that Rafael is being trialed. You know, maybe, you know, maybe that's something that you're looking at. I, I mean, that's one of the ones that's like, okay, I mean, maybe, maybe it's worth a shot. Uh, but, you know, I, I think we're, we're going to hold out on Rossi. I don't know if we can quite count him out, especially after that video and they're like lightning fast returns. And it's like, okay, well, that means Rossi could totally still be on the roster as well. So, um, so that's, that's out there. Now, Ben Kai joining... It's interesting. I I, I kind of pendulumed both ways about this announcement. When it was first announced, I was like, what? After all that, you've picked up Benkai? And then I was like, ah, oh. Benkai was actually still pretty good, though. It's just that everyone else is so explosive on Paper X. So, I mean, listen, I don't think it's the signing of a century. <laughs> I don't think so at all. Um, but I think Ben Kai's a fine player. Uh, supposedly, we don't know if he's trolling or not, but supposedly he was talking in, uh, Boaster, in Sue and Boaster's stream, uh, and saying that he's not primary calling, so he's not primary IGL. So maybe, maybe there's another IGL that's coming, which, uh, we can, let's come back to that, because there's, there's a lot to speculate about GE, but if he's not calling, uh, and they're not going to play a Paper X style super, super aggressive. I think Benkai, maybe, you know, for Benkai's sake, I think it's worth another shot. I think, uh, I think he absolutely, if he's playing again as a fan, right, as a third person, as a spectator, I'm willing to say, okay, 2024, we'll see if Benkai can show that, you know, without that pressure, etc., without having to try to mix the styles on Paper X, etc., his aim can return to a peak form. Um, and then, you know, he can still assist as a secondary caller, things like that. Then maybe. So, we'll wait and see. But again, uh, Ben Kai and Lightning Fast are the two confirmed ones for this. Blaze King has been rumored for quite some time now, but nothing's come out just yet. So, if it's Blaze King, right? If it's Ben Kai, Blaze King, Lightning Fast, I mean, I'm going to be very honest. I'm not excited for the roster. I don't think they're going to be like woefully bad but i don't think it's exciting at all so hopefully whoever else they're getting right is someone who's explosive and the question is is are you still looking for a primary duelist or is that kind of going to be lightning fast or is it maybe rossi still staying as well are they swapping off you know doing duelist and flex and then and then your igl right so so who's the igl here we don't know. Once we're done with the list, we'll see if we can come up with any names. Uh, Talon, there's been nothing. GG. Moving on. DFM, uh, there has been nothing. I think even last week, Radon suggests we're already announced, right? Let's just double check. Uh, yes. So. Oh, not suggest. Seldom. Why did I put suggest? <laughs> I guess I just assumed. But this roster, uh, again, not, I'm not excited for it. Um, I mean, I have no idea. I even left suggest name here. So clearly, it's just because of the S, all right? I was thrown off. Uh, but yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on with this team. Again, we don't even know if they're trying to keep an, uh, keep an all-English team or all-Japanese team. I mean, they weren't an all-Japanese team, but like a Japanese comms team. We don't know. There are options. There are some options, but they're not huge upgrades. Oh, so another team will wait and see. Uh, bleed. I mean, there's there's all sorts of rumors, right? There's like, oh, is it Yay? Is it Aspas? Like, who could it be? Um, <laughs> who knows? I will say this though. I will say. <laughs> so now that there's no other confirmed signings, let's talk. Let's talk about, um, like, who's who's available to be moved around, right? Who I think is worth looking at. I think Crystal's absolutely worth looking at. And Crystal... Crystal could fit a lot of teams, okay? 
Crystal can fit a lot of teams. Right? He was playing flex in terms of duelist and initiator. And he played well on both. So, and he was calling. So it's like, he can provide so much for so many different teams. Now, what are some teams he could work with? Oh, I don't know. I think he could work pretty well on bleed. I mean, I guess Crazy Guy and Crystal have to figure out who's flashing, but I think that's a possibility. But obviously, if bleed is looking at Ye or Aspas, then that would be their import. So they can't get Crystal, but there's something to look at there. Um... Who else? GE. GE would need one. And they need an IGL if Benkai is not the one calling. So there's an opportunity there. If Talon is happy to communicate in English, which I don't think they're going to be. Um, but hey, if they're like, maybe it's time. I mean, comms, we can just keep it simple. Crystal could fill in for Fox if he's willing to learn flashes. Cruz could go back to playing Flash, you know, Initiator. And Crystal could play the same flex roles he's been playing on Talon. Wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't be bad. Right? So, there there are a lot of different teams here. Team Secret, if they wanted common English as well. So, there are a lot of teams where I think Chris, Crystal could really f uh, fit. I mean, we don't know if Benkai not IGLing is true. I mean, this guy is trolling with... You know, ice cold humor all the time, so who knows? But I wouldn't be surprised if he's not eye jelly. So I think Crystal's worth looking at. Um I think Xe is worth looking at if I don't know what the situation is with D plus and his contract with D plus, but I think he's a player worth looking at. But here's what we're starting to see, right? We're, we're there's a lot of these like flex players that can help call or or IGL. And that that could help a lot of teams. That could open up a lot of options for teams, but that would mean that they, especially if it's not Crystal, if it's someone like XE, that they would need to they would need to again, same thing that RQ had to work on is they would need an explosive duelist. Which is why if this worked, you know, if this is really something that's being worked on, I guess we'll put it in yellow. It's like, okay, this could be good, right? Um, but within Pacific, the only other one, the only other quote-unquote explosive duel duelist that's floating around is Texture. Yeah. But even texture, I don't know if he's like the the type of explosiveness we're talking about. He's a he's a very steady opera and he's a good jet. Um, but yeah, I don't know if. Uh, but again, he's always, also always he's had a weird career when he couldn't really prove himself that much. So other than that, within Pacific, there's no one else. I mean, yes, there. You know, if you want to look deep, there there's going to be some up and coming talents that you could look at within the challenger scenes of different countries uh, within Pacific. But other than that, so listen, like you're Aspas to bleed or GE. Okay, then we're talking, then we're talking. Um, I And even without Yair Aspas, I think bleed will still be an exciting roster to look at. Again, I've talked about it last week. I think this three as a core is actually really, really solid. Uh, worst case, Darion could go back to being primary duelist, right? They have their options here. So um, I think, I think Bleed's going to be a pretty exciting team to still look at, but GE, if they don't get someone like a year of Aspas, you know, one of the EG guys, whatever, then, then I don't know. But surely, surely they do though. I mean, sure, surely they get someone from International. There's that rumor going around that they're getting health, which I don't know. Again, nothing against any of these players individually, but that that is just like the most not exciting roster of VCT Pacific, other than if Zeta keep all five players. So, hopefully that's not true. Now, with that all said and done, I don't think much has changed then. 
we're going to zoom out for this. I'll, I'll zoom in on the YouTube, but just so I can see the entire roster. I actually, oh, man. DRX is such a mystery because who knows what their style is going to look at look like the next match they play. Maybe they revert back to just old old knee set plays textbook style. Because if that's the case, I think I think there's a world where RQ could at least take a game off of DRX, if not a, like at least one match. But we'll go with. I mean, time is is hard to beat. So PRX DRX doesn't change. Um, I think even when Manya Paper X can still be continue to beat uh, DRX. Uh, but I think if if Jemkin does join RQ, I think RQ can beat T1. Just because of certain X factors like Saya and King, I think it's a, I think it's a little hard to tell. Um, we also again we still don't know exactly what Excure it's going to look like on, on this roster, but I'm still gonna I'm I'm gonna ride the hype train for RQ. T1 stays there. Um, man, this is hard. Listen, assuming Bleed gets one of those duelists, which, I, man, that is crazy to think about. But assuming they do, which I, if, if it, if it does happen, I don't think it's Ospos, I think it's Ye. Let's assume they do. Then, th then I think they go all the way up to top five. Not just, not because, like, Ye is just going to stomp on everyone, but just because I think the core is so good that I think having someone who can just... Who can pop off would help a lot man i don't know team secret with war words mm. envy is also very very good i mean let's okay let's not count out let's not count out team secret i, th I feel like i do that very often just because they're always like consistently the gatekeeper but let, let's let's do this um DFM is definitely at the bottom. I actually think if things stay the way they are, I think this might even be true. And because the more I the more I sit here with no information about Gen G, the, the less faith I have. Yeah, if they get an explosive duelist. Right? Or, you know. Or if they don't, maybe they pick up Crystal and they they get another Flex slash Sentinel. I think Bleed. I think Bleed could get top five. Top. I think they can definitely get top six. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overhyping them. But I I just think the the more I think about it, I I've been starting to put more weight into cores, right? And I feel like this is a really good core. That was one of the things for DRX where it's like it's such a good. I mean, it's hard to say core because it's been this five for a while now, but uh, RB st Stacks and Zest are such a good core, but the problem was that they were in stuck in such a style. Um, yeah, I mean, Gen G, again, like, you know, I said it last week, but Gen G should, Gen G and DFM should just not be on the list and they should be question marks outside of it because right now we're just going off of feeling. Like, Genji had no reason to be moved, it's just I have now more hype about Bleed. But technically, nothing's changed about Bleed either. The rumors have been there the whole time, but I'm just like, okay, well, like, time is passing, so I'm starting to think it's likely. <laughs> so, but if that's the case, uh, yeah. If it gets announced, I might, depending on who the fifth is, I might put Bleed above Team Secret. Which would be crazy. It'd be a really big success story for that squad. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a really good core. I think it's a really good core. Um, and the more I thought about it, what you guys mentioned in chat about Zeta being late to adapt, which is why they have that fairy tale story, you know, repeat itself, that meta. And it's like, okay, well, I, this is partly I'm just not excited for it, but I mean, I. <laughs> I'm I'm having faith that G's gonna pick up someone explosive, right? That's where I'm putting faith in. Let's put it that way. So, all right, that is my ranking for week two of Roster Mania. Uh, yeah, I thought actually there was a lot to talk about here today, but the more we went through it, the less there was. But we still filled an hour and a half. It's amazing how much I can talk on my own. But thanks so much for joining me for this one. Uh, I think we're going to start to see some some stuff get announced. 
probably in the next like two weeks or so. Not everything, but but things where we're gonna start to really see the the pieces fall into place. I assume teams like I think Gen G, Zeta, and DFM we might not even hear from for a while. Um, just because I feel like there's just like so much to consider here. But teams that are looking for like one player, you know, one or two, or ones that we like think there are rumors and it's just a matter of like is it being signed or not, things like that, or is it announced yet? Is it approved? Things like that. Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll come through in the next week or two. So that is it for week two of East Deep Pacific Roster Mania. Let me know what you guys think. If there are any other rumors that you want to take a closer look at or that you personally think is quite likely, let me know in the comments down below. We'll be doing this every week on Wednesday here on Twitch as well live. And then it'll go up on YouTube the next day. So if you want to join the live discussion and chat, join us over on my Twitch channel. That's it for this week, and I will see you all next time.